Welcome to the third installment in this five part series on the top five mistakes that people make when they first start using InDesign. In this third installment, we'll be looking at images and how sometimes they can go missing, which can be a nightmare in InDesign. So to avoid this common mistake, let's dive right in and take a look at them. When it comes to working with images in InDesign, one area that I see people struggle with is this idea of linking images. Essentially, when we bring images into InDesign, it won't embed those images inside of the file. The benefit of this is that you don't end up with files that are large in size and slow to work on. So basically, by reducing the file size, you're able to work a lot quicker without InDesign being slowed down by holding all the weight of large file sizes. Now to bring an image in, if I scroll down to a blank page, what I'll do is place an image by going up to my file and then place option. Then I just navigate to where I have an image, click on it, choose open. And as you can see, it's given me a preview in my cursor and I'm just going to click and drag and release to drop that image in. Now, when we're working with images, we work with the links panel. Essentially, InDesign refers to any images we place in as links because it links back to the original source. So with my links panel open here, you can see the image that I've just dropped in, frontdoor.jpg, is sitting there highlighted. Now, you may notice at the bottom of this links panel, one of my images, diningroom.jpg, has this red question mark. And this is something that I see a lot in people who first start using InDesign. Basically what this red question mark reads as an error. It means the image is actually missing. So if I click on that image, and I'll actually click on this little number here, number three, which just refers to the page on which that image occurs, you can see it's now selected the image on page three. So this image here is missing, the link is missing. Even though you can still see a preview in InDesign, if I was to export this as a PDF or send it to print, it would come out very pixelated. There'd be issues with the image. So I need to resolve that issue. The quickest way to resolve the issue is to locate the original file and place it back into the folder from where it came when I originally placed it. I can also locate the file if I come across to my links panel again and then just by double clicking on that red question mark, it opens up my window and then I can navigate to where the file is saved. There it is there, so I just select the file, click open and as you can see that error message has been resolved. So when it comes to working with images in InDesign, just be aware that you've got to manage your images well. If you place an image in, make sure that it stays in the location from where you placed it, otherwise you can run into issues. You can also embed images into InDesign. Just be aware that it does increase the file size when you do this. One benefit of this is that if you choose to move the InDesign file to a new computer, you only need to take the InDesign file with you on a USB or onto a device to move it to another computer. If you've linked the files, however, you need to ensure that you save the InDesign file and all of the files that you've linked onto the USB if you're transporting it to a new computer in order for InDesign to read those images correctly. So the key takeaway from this video is to ensure that when you place your images that they remain in their original location and if you're transporting your InDesign file between computers that you take not just the InDesign file with you but any linked photos that you've placed into the document in order to preview those images and print and export the InDesign file correctly. I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial.